guys just had a really cool chat with john from swamp coffin about the band's new record noose almighty and the crossover appeal between metal and wrestling thank you guys so much uh, for checking this out watching and uh, we really appreciate your support and we will see you soon all right thank you oh yeah Thank you very much. We're, re we're recording now, as, as you can hear oh, yeah. from the voice. Um, before we talk about wrestling, because that's one of the things we're here to do, uh, mm -hmm. what I've started doing is because because I uh, work on Soundsphere, which is a music publication. Yeah. And I was like, why don't I start interviewing bands about wrestling? Because there's some definite crossover there. So yeah. Uh, so we're going to try and make this a regular thing. But uh, yeah, starting off about the music, man. Obviously, which is which is a you know it's a big part of who you are and. And so, well, obviously, you know, I uh, was listening to the record. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a beast, man. Bit of a <laughs> bit of a fucking beast. We can swear. You see, this is the great thing about the wrestling podcast is I can swear. Um, you, do, you, you don't have to tell me twice. Don't worry about that. Uh, absolutely, yeah. It's a bit, so you've got a new song mate, coming out on APF twenty sixth of November. Uh, quite a quite a heavy record uh, by all accounts, from what I was reading from the PR. Obviously, you've been through some been through some heavy shit to get to this point to get the record out there yeah, how how do you feel in, in advance of it? it it's not a delicate record is it no no it's no. not no um do you know what weirdly enough i'm feeling better now than i've done for a long time because right the the whole thing of of this record so as you'll have seen in the in the press stuff yeah the very first demo the day that we were due to record we literally got a knock on the door yeah oh, so, to say that my brother-in-law had died. So that, obviously, when you then go into a studio, is on the back of your mind, and that sort of fueled it. And then the house burnt down about six months after that. So that second EP is then me being really, really fucked off uh, yeah. about various things. And it just sort of adds up and adds up. And obviously, the writing process for this started back then yeah. because COVID's obviously caused all sorts of problems. So we're basically a year behind where we wanted to be putting this album out. Mm. So some of that vibe is still there. I'm still processing stuff, but it feels yeah. like now, now it's in the bag. I'm happy as Larry. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to sing about in the next one. So uh, yeah, absolutely. So because you, again, you had that, you had that knock on the door. You had that loss. You also, you, like I said, a house burnt down as well. You know, I feel like this record is 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 a collection of really, you know, like when, when I'm listening to it, you know, there was like a couple of songs on there. Uh, particularly your problem, well, your problem I loved, but a bunch of songs on there, and you're like, you can feel the anger, you can feel, without trying to be too cliche, you can feel the anger and the energy on it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Is, is this the kind of thing that you can put this record, obviously you're very proud of it, you're going to promote it, you're going to tour it, stuff, I know you're doing some shows, but is it is it the kind of thing that you'll, you'll use as, yeah, you, you'll use it as catharsis, you'll put it to one side and you'll be able to go forward and feel, you know, a little bit more, motivated positive going forward definitely because it feels like obviously you you're singing about the stuff that i'm i say mm. singing, mm. screaming about um it's it's like a therapy session yes so it was it was a three-day therapy session when we we're in the studio recording it and then every time we play a show mm. for 30 minutes i'm venting yeah um and it's very much don't fucking come near with me when i'm when we're about to start because shit's about to go down yeah. Um, and then afterwards, I'm really apologetic because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I put, I put a lot into it when we're, when we're yeah. out there. But yeah, it's it's good. And it's that thing. I mean, I grew up listening to corn and then I got into hardcore. And it's those things that those, those guys, they're not talking about, you know, made up stuff. It's a yeah. lot of real problems. So yeah. I wanted that. And if anybody can relate, obviously, it's very specific to me. But hopefully there's some themes that people can at least relate to a little bit and you know, maybe somebody else can find some catharsis in it. Or... Absolutely, man. Certainly when I was listening to it, I was like sitting there and I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm vi I'm, yeah. I'm, vi I'm vibing off it, but equally you can you can hear in your, you know, in the lyrics and the vocals relatable stuff, some stuff I've been through, some stuff I know some of my mates have yeah. been through that are all part of that kind of hardcore doom circuit that, that sort of I've been involved in, you know, in, in bands and stuff. And I yeah. think there's, there's definitely some relatable some relatable stuff in there, man. So I can't wait to uh, to show your stuff to other people as well, man. I'm really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really psyched by it. I think yes. it's, you, you, when you've created something that not only makes people bob, not only makes people, you know, enjoy themselves listening to it, but you can also 
just you can feel it. Do you know what I mean? You can feel like you give a shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can hear you can hear that you really give a shit. You can hear that you've been through stuff. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean that that integrity is a big thing. Yeah, because you can. I mean, you can listen to the hardcore bands. You can listen to that sort of stuff, mm. and you know when you know when somebody's bullshitting you. Yeah, you know when somebody's phoning it in, and it's like I just want. And the, the reviews and the comments we've had already is like, yeah, this guy's upset about something. Yeah. This, this, this guy's gone through something. It's like, that's important. It's, it it's got to be real. It's got to be authentic. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, so one, again, one of the favourite tracks from the record from my listening period was Your Problem. Again, I, I, again, because I can maybe relate to some of the stuff mm. in there, but also just, 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 you know, it was one of those things I can imagine just can you know, getting down to with my mates, you know what I mean? Just enjoying, just enjoying a good, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a, just a night, you know. It's, the, it's just, you know what I mean? It's, what, it's like a dance floor ready track, like you used to listen to Pantera in the clubs or something, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that yeah. kind of that kind of vibe. So what went into that one particularly? Obviously, the album as a whole is cathartic, but your problem, uh, just to go into, in depth into one of the tracks, uh, you know, what, what kind of ideas, and, 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 and if you can tell me, experiences went into that. Yeah, yeah. So... If you the very start of that track, it's all reversed and garbled sounded. That's basically a sample from the end of the last EP. Yeah. So we, we very much wanted the vibe of the record to flow from where we were before. So it's literally just a sample of the, the big fade out from Last of the Summer Slime at the end of the last record. And it's just revenge. It's it is revenge fueled. It is so that period in, in my life when the house had burnt down and stuff. There's various people that um, fucked me over or tried to fuck us over, and mm. without, without spilling too much in the way details. But yeah, it's it's that whole vibe of yeah, I'll, I'll have you. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you've 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 started and you've you may have got on over me, but I'm going to fucking have you in the future. And that's that's pretty much what it's what it's about. It's you know, it's an angry. It's an angry. Uh, F you, so to speak. Very like much that. so, yeah. Very yeah, much so. I, I like that. That definitely definitely comes across, man. Um, <laughs> b- b- before we uh, sort of talk about the wrestling side of things, because mm. I do I do want to get into that. One of the questions I like to ask uh, in sort of my music themed interviews, and we speak to different artists from different backgrounds across, you know, rock music to metal, uh, you know, bands that have done, you know, different, they've achieved different levels of things. Now you're in a touring band. You've told with some some mint artists, you know, you speak horns other examples there you know that you know you've got that kind of cult following where people do really appreciate what you do and they appreciate your live sound and the energy um i ask you know in these in these interviews what do you define as success because i you know so so a lot of times i work with young people during you know as part of my day job and they sort of look at bands who are touring bands who are playing bands who are putting out records on labels they think oh man i never never going to be like Swamp Coffin. I'm never going to have that opportunity. It does happen, you know. They're like, I'm never going to have those opportunities. Well, I wonder what it's like going to be like to tour. I wonder what it's like to, to put our record with a label and have that support. And uh, again, they go, oh, well, I'm never going to get there. So in terms of your attitude to success and what it means to you, how, 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 how is it with you, John, from Swamp Coffin? How do you define success? It's really weird, particularly in this sort of band context, because... I mean, I'm 36. I'm not getting any younger. Mm. Um, and when you're 17 and 18, you're starting in bands. It's like, I want to be playing arenas and I want to be world famous and I'll be rich and I want a fancy sports car. And then <laughs> as you get to, then you get to 30s and you're just like, I'm just happy writing stuff that I think is good. Um, and it, su- success, at least in the early days for me, was people like this mm. and, and don't think it's shit and, and want to buy it. And it's, that, th- that first time you get somebody downloads a record, we were lucky to get shows quite early on, to get merch quite early on. Mm. Honestly, when somebody, when somebody comes up to you after a gig and says, oh, can I buy a T-shirt, please? That was amazing. Mm. Yeah. That, that's yeah, it man. for me. Yeah, There's, man. There are people in Canada, America, Europe, God, Russia, that have got our T-shirts on, which is bizarre, bizarre to me. Yeah. That's it. I, I think if if it all ended tomorrow, we've put a record out on a brilliant record label. We've played with Speed On. We have played with Coffins. We've yeah, dude. done all these Ace shows. We've had people that have actually liked it. That's it. If it if it ended tomorrow, 
I'm happy. You know do what? we want to do? Do we want to do bigger stuff? Yeah, we do. We want to play the bigger festivals, and there's a bunch of. Be- if Crowbar came knocking tomorrow and said, "Do you want to play with <laughs> yeah. us?" Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so it's cost. It, it feels like it's the success is like it's a movable scale, and it's yeah. like, yeah, I've achieved what I'm happy with. But yeah, I'm I'm open to a bit more if anyone wants to throw some my way. Absolutely, man. That's <laughs> lovely, actually. That that's an interesting perspective, and I and I don't always look at things that way. You know, you can. You can sit and you can go, well, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that, but people don't tend to focus on the things they have done. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing things you've done, you know, in terms of your career as a band. And again, having people buy I like I I'd forgotten, you know, like yeah, when someone came to buy, you know, one of my old band's t shirts and how lovely that felt. And you forget that because you're like, Oh, well, I I didn't do this, I didn't get to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I think you've got to make the most of of what you've got. I mean the speed on show that we did in Sheffield, it mm. was like a market stall afterwards. They were just people buying shit left, right and centre. And to walk from a stage sweaty with the guitar in your hand and there's 10, 15 people yeah. clamouring around your stuff is a great feeling. It is it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Congratulations, man. And I, <laughs> I wanted to stick in an extra one, actually, because sure. your voice is quite distinctive. Uh, you know, from a musical level, again, it's, it's, it's intense. Again, you can feel it in, you know, as a listener, you can feel your uh, your aggression, your, your emotion in there. And I wanted to ask you, you said you've been, in, you know, you've been doing the band thing for a while. When when did you initially find your voice? Where were you? And what were you doing when you were like, Fuck! I've got this. I've got this. Uh, I've got this sound. I've got this vibe. You know. You know. Without not without yeah. trying to sound without trying to sound too weird. I've got this thing. With, you know. I've got this vibe within me. All this sound. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know. Where no, did you it. find? Where did you find your voice? It was complete accident. Right. Okay. Was, so the first demo that we did, my younger brother's on vocals, and he's a fucking phenomenal vocalist in his own right. right. He's done plenty of bands. Uh, and he basically had a collapsed lung not long after he did that. So the whole idea of him gigging with us completely went out the window because he he couldn't do it because he's you know his health was more important. Um, and literally a practice it would have been 2018. I went shall I have a go at this? And just tried it, and that noise came out. Oh, mate. Which is a, a brilliant fluke. Um, I've, I, I mean I've been playing guitar for 20 probably 25 years. Been yeah. in band since I was 15 or 16 and never tried vocals. And then it was just necessity of, well, we can't replace my brother. Yeah. And, and finding anybody else that can do it, well, fuck it. Let's just let's just keep it easy. I'll do it. And nice. Yeah, it's worked out all right. But it yeah, was yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And congratulations on everything you've done. Thanks, uh, we are here, John, to talk about wrestling. And I could talk to you about music all day because, again, a lot of uh, a lot of shared experiences and love in there in terms of bands and artists. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, what, what we do, what we're doing here is wrestling with bands and we're talking about wrestling. So, uh, mm-hmm. mate. How so again? Similar similar vibe to the questions. We're just switching it from music to wrestling. How did you get into wrestling? Can you talk to me about uh, your kind of introduction to wrestling? Because there's a lot of crossover between heavy metal, and I've found it finding particularly metal and wrestling. But was it a traditional kind of crossover for you? Um, I would have been five or six. Nice. The, okay. The two, the two words that got me into wrestling were Hulk and Hogan. Nice. Okay. Yeah. The daft old racist bastard that he yes. is now. But as, yes. as a kid. You see yeah. that bright yellow and you see this dude ripping his shirt off and he's of people about. You go, yeah, I'm going have some of that. And it was it was seeing a picture of Hulk Hogan and a mate of mine had got all the Hasbro figures. Yeah. Um, that did all the gorilla press slams and the clotheslines. And you see that as a kid and you go, that's pretty cool. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Chris, Christmas 1992 was very wrestling based for me, put it that way. Nice one. That's a good year for it too. They had the SummerSlam. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah, they had the SummerSlam there. They're on about bringing it back as well, which would be exciting. I've, I, yeah, I've heard that rumor. Whether yeah. I'm as keen now yeah. on the WWE product, I don't know. But yes. yeah, I, I, I got that SummerSlam tape. Yeah. for Christmas that year and I played that thing to death yeah yeah that, I mean that's a natural you know natural progression uh, from your answer is what what are you into these days you know obviously WWE's product not for everybody now are you a, are you an AEW guy are you an Impact guy are you New Japan what, what is it that, that floats your boat uh, nowadays Sean do you know what I've tried them all over yeah. the years um, I'm AEW at the moment oh yeah I, I don't I got to a point with WWE where I was literally just watching highlight shows on YouTube yeah, same. And 
and NXT. And then I stopped doing that and I thought, why am I paying 10 quid a month to watch old pay-per-views and old episodes of Raw that I've seen 50 times? So knocked it on the head and AEW came on. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, what What is your, um, who are your kind of um, favourite sort of standout superstars at the moment? You Across the board, but obviously you mentioned AEW, so give me some of your people that are exciting you the most at the moment. Oh, God. Um, who do I like at the moment? Hangman Page. Page is AW, great. Obviously. Um, I am desperate to see what happens when he eventually comes back. But, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Team Taz guy. Nice. Oh, I love a bit of Team Taz. Yeah, I love I, a bit of Team Taz. I like, yeah, I like Uncle Taz. He's, yeah. he's just a... He's a curmudgeonly old bastard, which I can really, I can really relate to. He's, he's great, isn't he? And they've yeah. got a really, really good stable there as well. Uh, Hook looks like a beast. His kid, doesn't he? Like, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I'm looking forward to that CM Punk Hook match that's going to eventually, eventually gonna, arrive there. Yeah, it's going to happen eventually. Um, who else am I really into? I mean, WWE wise, I'm sure to see what Big E's doing. Yes, oh, because so I was good. always a big fan of his work, and it's like. When when I found out that he was gonna, he basically announced, didn't he, that yeah, I am did, going to gonna cash I'm in. Going, yeah, I'm going to win the belt. Please, for God's sake, watch the show um, because Punk had just gone over, and it yeah. felt like they were clutching at straws a bit. But then to see him win it, it's like it yeah. shit. They're clutching at straws. That's yeah, still, that's still pretty cool. It was a beautiful moment. Absolutely. Mm. It, was, it was a lovely moment as well. Um, in terms of your kind of uh, favorite wrestling moment of all time, then because obviously we've talked a little bit about stuff that's appealing to you now and your background again that SummerSlam 92 there uh, but in terms of that, like a whole moment that you kind of always go back to uh, you know man was uh, Mankind's first uh, WWE Championship win on the Raw <laughs> beating The Rock and I'll always go back to that and I'm not ashamed, yeah, yeah. Not ashamed to say I might have a little bit of a tear in my eye for that you know <laughs> when that happens uh, but have you got like a moment that you always go back to and it will always entertain you no matter how many times you watch it I have watched it a thousand times and it is Cactus Jack, Triple H, Royal Rumble 2000, Street Fight. Yeah, man. Yeah, That's dude. It. And do you know what? It's the promo before. The yes. promo before that is better than the Rock Austin promo. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Foley fo- fo- is good. I, I, I do. Very uh, much so. I had the opportunity to talk to him um, a few years back when he was doing his stand-up tour. Just a lovely human being as well. You know what I mean? Like, you know, these people you grow up around. Uh, or you go grow up watching and you get to chat to them and they're actually really lovely people and Foley was always my you know what I mean my go-to yeah, yeah. I, I loved I loved him for his resilience See, and his, uh, his vibe I I was never a mankind guy I, I never I never got mankind mm. but when he takes the shirt off and the Cactus Jack shirt's underneath that was and, a moment yeah. and Triple H looks like he's seen a fucking ghost yeah, he, yeah. the whole thing's perfect everybody yeah. everybody plays a part the match is brilliant. I'd, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd have been like 15. Yeah. And I'm watching this going, is he really got thumbtacks sticking out of his face? Yeah. Is he yeah. really hitting him with a, with a, a barbed wire baseball bat? And it it felt like being five or six again, thinking, uh, is it real? Yeah. You, you, I got suckered in so much. Um, Absolutely. And then, you know, it's it's that suspension of disbelief thing. That's when wrestling's at its best, when you go, are these two really... Like when... Um, Brock Lesnar was knocking the shit out of Braun Strowman. It's like, yes. these two really trying to kick the shit out of each other. And that that's when I love it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, absolutely. Oftentimes, I have to remind people that I'm uh, co-hosting streams with. It's a sp- suspension of disbelief, isn't it? And it's easy, yeah. when it's, it's easy when it's entertaining. But when you've got, you know, like the 24-7 title stuff or whatever at the moment that they're doing, you know, sometimes oh. it's, like, it's easier than others. Yeah, or when zombies randomly came in. Yes. I, I, I saw highlights that I was like, yeah. It's not for yeah. me. This. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I missed that. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, a big fan of Bray Wyatt, but uh, a lot of people didn't get. I think the 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 fiend gimmick got WWE kind of you know it got the WWE treatment because initially I th- I think that was supposed to be like a dual personality, like a Cactus Jack mm. mankind thing, but they kind of made it into this spooky weird stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, and I loved the TV presenter side of it. Like the yes, yeah, BBB's broom cupboard type thing was yeah, genius, absolutely. Um, and even even that would have been a great sort of cartoon era 90s gimmick, 
you know? mm, mm, absolutely man I mean like I say some of it hits and some of it misses but yeah. uh, there's, there's a couple of guys in the moment in terms of you know uh, that, that are doing really well one is Malachi Black in AEW uh, with, with his uh, Amen Ra theme which is a banner yeah. as well uh, you know th- doing that kind of supernatural but not really kind of thing I think that really works I don't know if you have any thoughts on you know sort of uh, characters uh, that, that also that also happen to use heavy metal in their themes but but also that kind of supernatural stuff um, yeah. Ma- Malachi Black I think is really good I mean it's like Undertaker he's a zombie wizard funeral director yes. who shoots lightning and he's controlled by an urn and everybody's like yeah that's fine yeah that, that, yeah, that makes yeah. perfect sense I've, I've no issues with it um, so yeah I don't mind a bit of spooky stuff it's like Bray Wyatt Orton there's yes. worms on the floor it's shit yeah yeah it's, it's over the top yeah absolutely yeah, it, there's a, it's a very thin line with the spooky stuff between yeah this is really cool and it's a bit different to now nah, this looks crap this looks yeah. like yeah. effects from Mega Shark versus yeah. Giant Octopus it's that sort of beat when it gets to B movie yeah. it can be a bit shit but yeah Malachi Black says Absolutely. So, yeah, you've got time for The Undertaker, Malachi Black, but less time for Worms on the Mac kind of thing. Yeah, That's basically, kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so a couple of quick fire questions. Uh, mm. Favourite wrestler of all time? Steve Blackman. Oh, the lethal weapon. That's the one. Yeah, that hardcore man. Ra- Raven was mine. So, so yeah, like, yeah. That, the, the, they had some classic matches. Okay, uh, favourite match of all time? That Triple H Street fight. Oh, good call, man. Good call. Most ridiculous match of all time, in your opinion? Oh, Christ. Um, ooh, Undertaker versus Fake Undertaker. Ooh, nice one. So it was on 93, is that? 94? Yeah, yeah, round that. Round yeah. that. Uh, best gimmick of all time? Oh. Austin? Nice. I'm struggling here, because Austin got that sort of I want to kill the boss thing, which is the most relatable gimmick ever, I think. Mm, absolutely everyone loves that ever most overrated performer of all time mm. tough one right it is i mean it's it's oh god it's a tricky one because it's like i was gonna say cena it's like no nah, cena's amazing he is amazing even yeah. even Ho- even hogan did what he was supposed to do um fuck it Dolph Ziggler. oh we're in agreement I love that. I, really? think Dolph, I think Dolph's amazing. I think like everybody I speak to thinks he's like a budget Shawn Michaels. I'm like that dude could work better than Shawn Michaels. It's just that he doesn't make a big deal out of it, and that's the point. He can he can he can work, but he's been there 20 years and has done nothing. Well, yeah, and well, that's yeah. How is he? How is he constantly being paid to just do the same shit for 20 years? Is it, it 20 years? It's his selling. Yeah, it's probably more like fifteen, but yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's his selling ability, man. His selling ability is what his ability to forget that he's he's selling when he runs up a ladder. <laughs> oh no, I've been hit by a car, but I'm going to run up the ladder now. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No. I, I, I actually. Uh, yeah. I think. I think. I because. I don't know. Sometimes I go through overrated and underrated with him. To be fair, I, I switch between. So that is my next one. So we've done overrated. What about the most? You might. You might have already answered it. You might, are you going to say Steve Blackman? But the most underrated performer of all time? Nope. I'm going to say Crush. Ah, oh, nice one. Like Crush. Early nineties yeah. Crush. You get yeah. shot on for being terrible, and I love the guy. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, dream match. If you could put anybody together from different eras uh, across promotions, we're not we're not precious. Uh, dream match. If you could put together one or two matches what, uh, for a swamp coffin pay per view, uh, what would you what would you uh, what would you put together? I'd want some lucha libre shit. Yeah, definitely. So I'd want uh, I don't know. Let's go Mel Mascaras versus. Ooh, let's go weird. Uh, Mascarita Sagrada, who you may have seen in Lucha Underground. Yeah, love Lucha, love Lucha Underground, man. Yeah. Like, uh, I was That's... gutted. I was gutted when that discontinued. So yeah, it, it was It was. Ju- it was like just that ground between weird stuff and then what NXT was doing and yeah. then just and like Brit Rest type stuff. It was a, yeah. a nice, intimate sort of feel. Absolutely. But yeah, that, Absolutely. I, I, I do like my... I used to watch um, a lot of Lucha. Yeah. When I when I first went off WWE, I got into Lucha, so I'd have to have that. Uh, Austin Goldberg. Okay, yeah. What like current era Goldberg or twenty what, years? Current current gonna injure everybody Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I mean, yeah. 
Yeah, I'd say, I'd say peak, like, let's say, let's say, Goldberg, say, yeah. let's say 90, 98 Goldberg yeah. against nice. 98 Austin. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Yeah, good. That's, that's, that's some good, uh, good stuff there, man. Um, <laughs> like it. Um, do you have, uh, you know, in terms of Brit wrestling, obviously it's taken a bit of a beating the last few months. Do you have a performer that the, the, you would like to sort of push, like to shout out any, any performer from the Brit wrestling community that you're a particular fan of that you think people should know about? Uh, there is a chap called Hustle Malone cool. that more people should be familiar with who I've seen wrestling from uh, 20 people who's now working for Progress, I believe. Oh, awesome. I think he's doing their commentary, but he's a phenomenal, he's a brilliant heel, but he's a great face as well. Fantastic, fantastic. A uh, couple of uh, questions to finish off then. Uh, if you could soundtrack any wrestling entrance, if you could rip it away so we don't have to worry about copyright here, right? If you could soundtrack uh, any uh, performer or, or, or wrestler out there with a Swamp Coffin, it has to be a Swamp Coffin track. Uh, what track would you choose and what performer, what wrestler would you choose? Ooh. See, everything tells me Shockmaster. <laughs> um, It'd have to be, let's say earthquake, okay. nice, and possibly your problem because it's got cool. that sort of thundering kind yes. of thing going on. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, I love yeah. that. I love that. Actually, earthquake. That'd be awesome. I'd be just down a, with that. Just a big dude with a big slow tune. That's yeah. Yeah, Works for yeah, me. yeah. I love that, man. I love that. Uh, last question then. Uh, for, for, in terms of your message for any wrestling fans or long-time fans of Swamp Coffin, uh, the, the, uh, well, we'll go. We'll go with. This, that we'll, we'll split that into two questions actually a little bit easier uh, what is your message for any wrestling fans that are yet to check out Swap Coffin uh, and, and may, may listen to this or may find you uh, by other means uh, what would you like to say to any fans uh, that have yet to discover Swap Coffin if you like wrestling you probably like riffs <laughs> um, like you said earlier there's not very a, a big line between no. People that like wrestling and people that like metal. It's we all like black t-shirts. We do. We're, we're, we're all moody as teenagers, and there's a nice crossover. So yeah, if you were moody once, if you're moody now, if you liked old school WWF attitude era stuff, you'll you'll probably like us. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And your message for long-time supporters, so people that have been with you since the beginning, uh, would you have a message that you would like to uh, say to uh, Swap Coffin supporters and fans that have got behind you and will continue to do so? Yeah, uh, thank you. Nice one. It's easy, easy as that. And sorry to anybody that we've made deaf because we're pretty loud when we play live. Indeed. Indeed. So massive apologies. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to checking you guys out uh, live hopefully soon. I'm not too far away from from those shows. Um, so, so, yeah. The, and and f finally, finally, then in terms of you're obviously giving a message to your fans, you're obviously giving a message to people that, uh, you know, that, 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 that haven't heard you. Uh, this is the press bit, the plugging bit. You have a new record out. Is there anything else, John, that you would like to plug? That you would like to take the opportunity to promote? We have got. So you've seen the new record. New Soul Martin, 26th of November. Um, there is the launch of the Bastard Club. So our last record was Flat Cat Bastard Features. Bastard is a big thing for us. Uh, our, our fans, we address as bastards cool. uh, in the nicest way possible. So, yeah, new line of merch. Hopefully some some developments coming in in future. But, yeah, we want, we want people to be welcome. Come and, you know, be part of our miserable little club. I love it. I love it. Def I'm definitely, definitely down with that, John. Well, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much for your time today, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, Pleasure. Look forward, to, look forward to seeing you out on the road, mate. All right. No worries. Take, take it easy, man. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.